All right, so now let's move to question 1.2, where we're asked, what is the result of the measurements in the following circuit, assuming error-free quantum computation? And we're given a two qubit quantum circuit with a Hadamard gate, followed by a C0 gate, and then measurements on both qubit zero and qubit one. So in this question, what I'm going to assume is that what we're being asked is, what is the distribution of the measurement output if we repeat or execute this circuit several times over and over again. So before going into Qiskit and implementing this, let's take a look at how we solve this analytically. So again, so question 1.2. Now we have a two qubit circuit, qubit zero, qubit one, and then we have a Hadamard gate on qubit zero. Okay. And a CX gate or a C naught gate between qubit zero and qubit one. And here, if you notice, we have the control on qubit zero and the target on qubit one. So an assumption that we need to make before solving this circuit, which let's just put the, the measurement also here at the output of each of the qubits. So we're measuring both Q0 and Q1. Uh, but yeah, to, to um, be able to solve the circuit, we also have to assume that our inputs are initialized at zero. So following Qiskit's convention, we have Q1, so the most significant bit or qubit on the left, tensor with Q0, which we can also represent in this notation, Q1, Q0, initialize in state zero, tensor zero, or, you know, this notation, zero, zero. And if we apply a Hadamard gate only on qubit zero. Well, what we get is zero for qubit one, which doesn't change tensored with, now we have one over root two and an equal superposition of state zero and state one. Because if you recall from the previous video, the operator mat matrix for the Hadamard gate is one over root two 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So if we multiply this with state uh, 0, which is the state vector 1, 0, well, this gives us 1 over 2, state 0 plus state 1. So that's what we get for, again, qubit 1 doesn't change, and qubit 0. Now this state, we can also represent in the following form, if we distribute the, the qubit one, we can represent this in this notation as one over root two, state zero, zero, plus state zero, one. So now after applying the Hadamard gate, what we do is we apply a C naught gate. So let's apply our C naught gate here. But now we have the control qubit on zero and the target qubit on one. And if you remember, um, the, the C naught gate, the function of the C naught gate is to leave the target qubit alone, so don't make any changes if your control qubit is zero, and flip or apply an X gate to the target qubit if your control qubit is in state one. So following from the state we had before here, so if we look at qubit zero, which is this one in this case, is at zero, so that means that we leave qubit one alone. So after applying the C naught, we have the same state zero, zero. 
But now, for the other part of the superposition, we have qubit 0 uh, equal to state 1. So that means we should apply an X gate to our target qubit, which is qubit 1, which, as we saw from the previous video, applying an X gate to state 0 turns it into state 1. So then we get state 1, 1. Okay, so this is the state vector that we get at the output of applying the Hadamard gate followed by the C0 gate. So now we need to um, look into, well, what happens if we perform a measurement? And for that, we need to remember that for a general state, so, so if we have a general state and let's say we define it as, you know, probability amplitude alpha of n minus one, state a minus one of n minus one plus, you know, alpha one a one plus alpha zero a zero, the probability of measuring any of the states, so the probability of measuring, let's say, state a sub i, where i could be any integer from 0 to uh, n minus 1, the probability of measuring that state is given by, so probability of measuring a i is given by the norm of the probability amplitude alpha sub i squared. So in our particular case, where we have uh, the state, let's call it psi 1 over root 2, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Well, since we have two qubits, we can now measure state 0, 0 with probability equal to the norm of 1 over root 2 squared or measure state 1, 1 with same probability, 1 over root 2 squared, which is 1 half and 1 half. Okay, so that means that the probability of measuring 0, 0 or 1, 1 is 50% and 50%. So now let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and look at how to implement this in, in Qiskit. So the first thing we're going to do is similar to what we did for problem one is we're going to import the quantum circuit cla uh, class, so from Qiskit, import quantum circuit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is define our circuit. So we're going to do QC is what we're going to call it, quantum circuit. And now we're going to define two qubits, but also two classical bits, because we're going to be measuring the, the qubits, which as you can see from the measurement block, they have to be connected to a classical register where the output of the measurement is stored. And then we define our circuit by first applying a Hadamard gate on qubit zero, and then a CX gate or a C naught gate between state zero and state one. And in order to make this circuit look exactly the same, we're going to apply a barrier right after our CX gate. And then what we do is we measure. And the way we apply a measurement is first we pass a list with the qubits we want to measure. And then we pass a list of the classical bits we want to associate the, the measurement of each of the qubits too. So 
we're measuring qubit 0 and qubit 1, and we want to store the measurement of qubit 0 in register 0, classical register 0, and then the measurement of qubit 1 in classical register 1. And now, if we draw our circuit, we see that, in fact, it does look like um, the same circuit we were given for this problem. Next, what we need to do is run a simulation that would allow us to execute the circuit several times and then get the distribution of the measurements at the output. So for that, we need to import um, what is called a provider. In, in the case of Qiskit, this is called Air. And uh, this is where we find all the different simulators. And then we also want to import from Qiskit Tools Visualization um, the plot histogram function so that we can plot our results. So then we execute that. And then what we do is we define our simulator, which we get from the air provider. And the way we do this is by doing air and then dot get backend. And we're going to use the air simulator, which um, its function is to run a simulation that mimics as close as possible an actual uh, quantum processor. So the air simulator is a standard simulator in Qiskit and the way it executes is the same way as if you were running this on real har hardware. Then we define a job by doing simulator.run. So we're gonna run our simulation. And of course we gotta pass our quantum circuit and then we can specify the number of shots. So let's start with, for example, 1,024 shots. After defining the job that we're running, we're gonna extract the results by doing results, job.results. And finally, from those results, extract the counts, which are the number of times we've measured either a state 00, zero or a state 11. One, one by doing counts equal to results dot get counts of our quantum circuit. Finally, we're gonna plot this results by using plot histogram of the number of counts. And if we do this, we can see that we made a mistake here because it's job dot result, not results. And here we have it. We get with almost 50% probability state 00, zero and with almost 50% probability state 11. One, one. Now, the reason is not exactly 50 50 is because this is an actual simulation where we're running the circuit over and over again, and it's not going to be exactly half and half, but if we increase the number of shots, let's say 4,096, those numbers should be getting closer and closer to that 50-50 distribution. Well, we can run it again and see that it does get closer as, as we increase the number of shots. Okay, so if we go back to the statement here, we see that the answer for this question is 2 we get with 50% probability state 00, zero and with 50% probability state 11. One, one.